Hello, my name is Dr. Catherine O'Sullivan and I am the director of the BCL Pathways Programme. I also teach criminal law and criminology at both undergraduate and postgraduate level. My presentation today will focus on the law on assault, an area of law that you will encounter when you study criminal law, a compulsory module that you will take in either the first or second year of your studies, depending on which degree you choose. The reason I'm focusing on the law on assault is because it has featured in news reports, both in Ireland and elsewhere, in the context of COVID-19, where people have been charged with assault when they deliberately spat, sneezed or coughed on others, usually guardy or police officers, but also public transport workers and medical staff, and typically follow this action with a claim that they have COVID-19. Firstly, I'm going to set up what the law on assault is and show you how it captures incidents like this, even though clearly the COVID-19 pandemic was not in the mind of the legislature when the law on assault was drafted. Secondly, I'm going to talk more broadly about how, on a principled level, this use of the law of assault makes sense. My hope is that by the end of this short talk, you will have an appreciation not only for the complexity of the criminal law, but also for its adaptability. The offence of assault is to be found in sections 2, 3 and 4 of the Non-Fatal Offences Against the Person Act 1997. Section 2 sets out the basic offence, while sections 3 and 4 are known as aggravated assaults. Section 3 criminalises assaults that cause harm, while section 4 penalises acts that cause serious harm. I'm not going to get into the intricacies of these distinctions now. That fun will await you when you study criminal law in the future. Instead, I'm going to focus on the basic offence. An assault, like many criminal offences, requires an accused person to have done a prohibited act with a culpable or blameworthy state of mind. According to section 2 of the 1997 Act, an assault can occur in one of two ways in Ireland. One form of prohibited act is the application of force or impact on the victim's body without their consent. In other words, making contact with the victim by, for example, hitting them or throwing something at them. The second form of assault is the non-contact form. It's where you do an action that made the victim think that they are about to be subjected to unwanted force or impact. So, for example, where you don't actually hit them, but you curl your hand into a fist as if you're about to do so. The culpable or blameworthy state of mind that must accompany either of these two forms of prohibited action is that you intended to do the act in question or that you were reckless about whether or not you did. Now, how does spitting or sneezing or coughing at others fit into this? The answer is to be found in the concepts of the application of force and causing an impact. Force is defined in the 1997 Act as the application of heat, light, electricity, noise or any other form of energy or any other thing in solid, liquid or gaseous form. This is a remarkably broad definition and would capture water droplets, for example, that hit another person when you sneeze or cough at them, or for the non-contact form of assault, which make the other person think that they are about to be hit with them. Causing an impact is not defined in the 1997 Act, but it would include things like spitting at another person and, in the context of the non-contact form of assault, acting as if you were about to spit on them. However, it is not sufficient to have done the prohibited act in order for someone to be found guilty of the offence. If that offence requires the prohibited act to be done with a particular blameworthy state of mind, then that must also be proven. As already noted, for assault, this is intention or recklessness. This means that if you accidentally sneezed or coughed or spat at someone, perhaps because you're an overenthusiastic speaker, then you're not guilty of an assault. This shows us something important about the criminal law, that it primarily seeks to punish the blameworthy. This is not to say that there aren't problems with the criminal law and how it attributes blameworthiness. There are. It's just to note that it's an important guiding principle. The offence of assault also shows us that the criminal law seeks to protect people from unwanted or unwarranted interferences with their bodily integrity, even when the harm caused is minimal. For example, if someone spits on you while it's unpleasant, it doesn't really hurt. But that isn't the point. As Blackstone wrote in the late 1700s, the law cannot draw the line between different degrees of violence and therefore prohibits the first and lowest stage of it. Every man's person being sacred and no other having the right to meddle with it in any of the slightest manner. 
This long recognized right to bodily integrity or autonomy has been given a constitutional basis in Irish law by means of Article 40.3 of the Constitution. The offence of assault, then, is a means of protecting this right by seeking to deter people from engaging in this behaviour against others and punishing them if they choose nonetheless to do it. The law on assault also protects the constitutional right to privacy, where privacy is understood as the right to be left alone. Taking this broader view of, of the offence of assault, it becomes clear why deliberately spitting, sneezing or coughing on someone in the context of COVID-19 could constitute the offence. The criminal law is seeking to protect your rights to bodily integrity and privacy and the broad definition given to force and the lack of definition given to causing an impact means that the particulars of the offence are flexible enough to be able to capture new and previously unimagined ways of interfering with these rights. And this is so even if you don't have COVID-19 and or you don't pass it on even if you do. If you do pass on COVID-19, well then, that's where the aggravated or more serious forms of assault can be charged, as harm or serious harm is caused. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you in my criminal law class in the future.